Project Zomboid is a game that really emphasizes exploration and looting in order to survive. So today, I thought it'd be fun to limit myself to a very small and resource limited environment to see how far I can take it, and that environment just so happens to be a back water trailer park. The rules are quite simple, we can't leave the square and everything else is free game. But I will say this, if we're gonna survive, we're gonna have to plan and think carefully about our actions. Wish me luck everyone. We have lived our entire life inside this trailer park, and I'm probably gonna die in it. Anyways, welcome everyone to a new Project Zomboid Challenge. And that challenge is quite simple. All I have to do is survive. But we are trapped within our own trailer park. Whether due to personal preference or just due to the fact that I don't know anything else, we are stuck here. With not too many trailers around and definitely not a lot of resources, we're gonna have to do a lot in order to survive. Aside from that though, we are gonna be tackling this challenge as good old Chester a person who has an emphasis on foraging and long-term survival. So hopefully, these skills right here will help us survive. But skills don't really matter in the long term if I get ripped apart by zombies, so let's focus in on the now, which includes me getting some food, getting a weapon, and exploring our limited surroundings. So how about we start by looting our very own trailer here. It's pretty destitute and pretty depressing, but it's home, and that's where the heart is. So what do we got here? We have some orange soda and some red wine, which I will drink right now for an easy water bottle. We got a granola bar and some maple syrup. A few books about farming and fishing. Very, <laughs> very accurate for Chester, I would say. You know, he's, he's definitely a fishing kind of person. We also do have a nice red pen, which will be helpful in us marking down our surroundings. We have just some basic bandages, including a toilet plunger. I mean, it is a weapon. <laughs> a very goofy one, but one that might keep us alive. And lastly, we have a denim shirt, including a military camo desert shirt, a nice fanny pack, which I will wear, a television right in front of my bed. Very, very comfy. Oh, and we're actually catching one of the tail ends of life and living. All right, <laughs> it's been like five minutes and I've already updated my carpentry skill all the way to level three. Holy crap, Chester, you are already doing 10 times better than my last character. And lastly, we have some vitamins and a pen. So we don't have much here right now, but what we do have is the ability to mark down our home right here. <laughs> I love using the map so much, and I decided to go for a fog of war approach as there's not really much to explore. I'll be honest, this small little square right here has already revealed about 25% of our actual play zone, so um, yeah. We we'll might as well do a little bit of discovery along the way. And now that we do have some basic necessities, I think it's about time for us to head out and to look for items around the area. Namely stuff that might help me survive in the long term now, such as a better weapon, seeds, garbage bags, all of that, because with us being in a trailer park, a lot of our resources are going to be limited, including things like planks, unless I get extremely lucky and find a saw. So let's go enable our foraging mode and keep an eye out for anything on the way to the next trailer. The cool thing is that this place is known as a trailer park zone, so we might find some pretty crazy stuff around here. Anyways, it's time to go head out. <laughs> commando style. Matter of fact, we're getting so commando, I am reversing my cap. Alright, now we're gaming. And it looks like we already are finding some very good stuff. I love trailer parks. <laughs> that is quite literally a beer bottle right on the floor. It's empty, but that is a sign for the future, as we are going to be relying on this pretty often in order to find good stuff. These stones might not be helpful right now, but they might be helpful later on. And that grill is something I definitely want to think about later. Okay, so let's go check out this home here. Thankfully, there shouldn't be too many zombies nearby as we have started on the very first day of apocalypse mode and we are in a pretty rural location. Though that will change as time goes on. 
and the chopper event hits. What else do we have in here? We found a paperclip on the floor, absolutely nothing else inside, a couple of loose nails. Honestly, not the best loot, and I wasn't lying when I said there wasn't going to be much around here. At the very least, the more we explore, the more that actually gets revealed on our map, and we are soon about to realize how limiting this place is. I think there's one more row of trailers like this, and that is our entire play area. So how about instead of actually cutting down through that way, we're going to follow the northern curve and go up that way even if we do have to fight a few zombies. Because even if we are dealing with a lot of zombies that will rip me apart, Chester was built to survive, all right? <laughs> There's a very good reason on why his strength is at level nine, and I've read up on all of the survival shows. I am not to be pushed around, even with a damn plunger. <laughs> uh, prepare to die. Ah, oh, there goes our plunger, but that's fine because I can also use my feet. Not bad at all, Chester. What do these zombies have on them? Military boots? That's actually going to be very nice. Uh, rock t-shirt? Nah, you know what? I really like my, uh, I like my whole vibe right now without it. But we also do have a silver necklace with a crucifix. I might as well take that. An annotated map that will be extremely useless. Yeah, we're not going to Louisville. Those are just for city slickers. And I'll be honest, I think all of the city slickers are dead. And lastly, we have a nice classical wristwatch with a brown strap. Overall, not that bad. And it just so happens that the zombie has made my entry into this trailer very easy. All I got to do is equip the stone as a primary so I can get through and remove the broken glass without ruining any of my precious, precious health. So we have some newspapers in here, a set of bandages, a razor with some vitamins. Overall, not that bad. And lastly, we got oh, ho, ho, a nice brewski for us, which I will be grabbing right now. Now, I won't be grabbing the stuff like the sausages and the canned goods right now, and that's because I want to save that for another step of the plan. Right now is just the recon round to see what I'm dealing with and to see if there's any cool events around the area that I might be able to use. And then once we're done with that, I can start to stockpile our food so I can hoard it and put it within my own trailer. At the end of the day, the rest of these trailers and the rest of our neighbors that are now zombified are competition for me. And I'm gonna come out on top. I'm gonna have the best looking trailer and I'm gonna be surviving the longest as well. But we have, oh, ho, ho. that kind of changes stuff up. Namely, because we now have a decent weapon, but what I care about more are the radish seeds. These are going to be huge for me. Also the empty watering can, because I can go ahead and drop that outside right now, which will passively collect water whenever it rains. The radishes are huge though, not really the best thing to grow, but when all you have are just trailers, we take what we can get. We have some sports shorts, jeans, a t-shirt, and a couple of sheets. Okay, overall not the best, but at the very least, we are slowly extending our influence. Let's see what we have up next. We have a survivor home, a crashed wreck up there, and even more trailers with even more zombies. Sadly enough, I don't think we're going to be able to get inside that trailer right now because I don't have any tools to actually break inside. So all I can really do right now is just longingly stare at this zombie who definitely has a lot of supplies inside said trailer. I'm going to take a look around, see if there is an unbarricaded portion, and if not, we're just going to have to come back when we have the proper tools. Yeah, it's really looking like that case. But this place should have weapons for us. Yeah, there's a lot of zombies in here. All I can really do for now is just wait for them to do the job or do it myself later. Let's continue on down, though. As it's already 5.40 p.m. and I don't want to be wasting too much of our time. And surprisingly, I found a full thing of mushrooms right outside of their house, which is good to eat, by the way. There's a very good reason on why I decided to take Herbalist. Let's go check out these cars now. Who knows? We might find a hammer. 
in which we have matches, adhesive bandages, a garbage bag with an extra e a couple of extra plastic bags, a regular tire, and a couple of zombies that tried to interrupt me. Sorry, I kind of got jumbled with my words, but I did find a garbage bag, which is huge for me because I'm not sure if you can tell, but there is a severe lack of water sources here. So collecting garbage bags in order to make water collectors is going to be a very crucial part of our plan if I plan on surviving for a while. We have an extra plastic bag with there being some cigarettes, twine, and earbuds in here. Also fantastic finds for me. Overall, though, I'm kind of getting a little bit worried at our lack of resources. We've killed another zombie, and inside this trailer we have a single can opener, a couple of canned goods, and that really seems to be about it. Oh man, this is going to be a rough set of weeks, but hopefully we can find enough garbage bags to sustain ourselves for the future. Another thing I kind of have to look at is a way to dig furrows. I sadly cannot dig furrows with our hand scythe, but I'm sure we'll find something else later, and if worst comes to worst, I can dig with my hands. And you know what? I'm going to double down on the whole not looting thing just so I can go around and really map out the full expanse of our trailer park. We also do have a nice dart key right down here, which really isn't helpful in this run because I can drive a total of five feet before having it to turn right back around. But I can see if it has gas, and it does, and it also starts. <laughs> no way! Oh, in any other run, I would be so happy right now, even if this car is junk. And we'll might as well use this to drive around our trailer park. By the way, our border limit is the Dixie sign right up there, so I cannot go any further. But one thing I can do is drive around our nice little park here just to see what I'm working with, which honestly isn't a lot. The only thing that really sticks out to me right now is that survivor home. And that is the entirety of our place. That is it. <laughs> we have did a full loop and it took a total of five seconds, but I will park our nice vehicle right in front of our trailer just so I can set myself apart from the rest of our neighbors. Yeah, we're going to be dealing with a bit of an item drought and I highly doubt I'm going to be able to get enough in order to actually survive, but I think that's the real fun of this challenge. And speaking about item scarcity, I'm going to be enabling the foraging mode way more often so I can catch as much as I can. But now that we've explored everything, let's go take out the rest of the threats here with my hand scythe. Who knows, we'll maybe find something nice. And that was as easy as taking out the garbage. And yes, that was a subtle, not so subtle jab towards another character. And another thing that I saw on the zombie is a nice screwdriver lodged within his thigh, which is a tool that I will absolutely take, including the digital watch. Everything else is kind of useless, but I will be stripping all of these zombies to put the stuff on the floor, so I have it in easier access. There we are. Now, I will say it is getting pretty laid out for me, so I think for the rest of the day, I'm going to go around and forage as much as possible to see what I can find, because right now, that's what I really care about, and this is probably going to be my only saving grace in this run, is my ability to find stuff out of nowhere. Though I, I was about to say that, but now I hear this zombie inside of this trailer and I kind of have to kill him. Hello, time for you to die. Goodbye. Nice. It also looks like a few more zombies really want to find out. So I welcome you to day two. I woke up at 5.40 a.m., which means that we are going to be able to catch another Life and Living episode at 6 p.m. Now, I did wake up a little bit anxious, and that's not because of what you might be thinking, which is Smoker, and that's actually because I took Hemophobic for this run, which means that if I get blood on me, which I currently do have, and that makes me pretty anxious. Thankfully, it's very easy to deal with, as all I need to do is take a shower. 
But first, let's go read up on a little bit of the cooking show. Bada bam, that's one level. And now we can go have ourselves a toilet shower. And now that we are clean, I think we can start to focus down and focus on just looting and getting all of said loot back to our base. As we have mapped out the entirety of our small trailer park, it's this quadrant right here. This is all we have to explore. There might be some buildings up here, but sadly they are right behind the Dixie sign. So this is really all in our jurisdiction. We have around 15 or so trailers, and right now, I kind of want to clean out this corner at the least. So we're going to be dropping off all of our supplies, putting food in its respective containers, and hopefully we'll be able to get ourselves a decent stockpile of supplies. But that has to start with me moving stuff on over, all while having foraging mode enabled, because sometimes you can find some really cool stuff inside. So what do we have inside here? We got a can opener, evaporated milk, pickles, processed cheese, and strawberries, a dehydrated meat stick on a dead corpse. Don't mind if I do. Hey, I'll snap into that one. Last but not least, though, we have ourselves a mini fridge. Now, Chester wasn't the richest man around. Matter of fact, he was one of the most poor. And I was so poor, I, I actually did not start with a, with a mini fridge within my own home. So I think it's only right that I treat myself to taking this mini fridge here so I can go ahead and slap it down where it truly belongs in my house because my house is the best house this fridge will be able to keep all of my perishable goods extremely fine as well <laughs> hell yeah it's the small things that you really gotta look up for let's go finish off the other home and then we can switch up our focus we have a sewing kit that's very nice tweezers an entire banquet meal, including carrots, salt, and small bird meat. Wow, you can really tell this is a trailer park. I wonder what kind of bird meat this is. I hope it's pheasant, but I'm also wondering why they didn't cook the damn meal. They already had it prepared like they were just going to eat it as is, or maybe they were preparing it. Actually, they were preparing it because they had a baking tray. Well, I can finish off that later. We also have an empty cooking pot, kitchen tongs, even more canned food. And lastly, a whole bunch of dried beans. That is going to be huge for my survival. We also have some frozen peas. And inside the bedroom, we have three VHS tapes. Operation Fort Knox, Strange Little Men, and You Are Dead. Other than that, we have some sheets. So I think it's about time for me to move my way up towards the survivor home. I can save the rest of these homes for later. I will also start to mark down every single location that I've looted so far. You already know what I have up here, so all I'm going to do is run through both of the trailers, looting everything I can find, and then I can finally go check out this trailer here, which I am extremely excited for. Let's get a move on, though. Ooh, is what I would say if it wasn't 12 p.m. right now, which means that it is prime time life and living, and I am never gonna miss one of these. God, I love Americanized television, I tell you what. Sadly, it wasn't enough for me to level up, but almost having level 4 in carpentry in our first or second day is huge. Okay, now I can finally move out. all the way towards the most promising trailer in a sea of disappointments. And it does look like uh, <laughs> our friend right below my feet here let himself out, which is extremely helpful. I'll be taking your cigarettes and I will be pilfering and looting your home, good sir. Please have some good stuff in store for me as I deserve it. Wow, there's a lot more bodies here than I was expecting. And also, nice shirt, sir. I will have to say, is that a shooting club shirt? Oh, it is. It's a Valley Station t-shirt. Not bad. But I don't really care about... Oh my gosh, that is a lot of weaponry for me to have. Now, you might be wondering, why do I need all of this weaponry? When, you know, we live in a trailer park and there's not a lot of zombies nearby. And that's quite simple. 
Uh, zombie migration. I am playing on the default apocalypse, so there is going to be a point to where if I live long enough and I stick around the main area, the zombies will migrate into my area and make my life a living hell. Not including the chopper event, as I live right on the highway. You can't see it right now, but right about right here is the main Muldraw Highway. So, you know, the more time I stick around here, the more chances a zombie gets to migrate over towards my location. Other than that, we have a digital watch, a cowboy hat, I was really hoping for some more stuff, rolling pins, a garden fork with a shovel and crafted spear, actually huge, that means I can grow my, or I, that means I can dig my own furrows, and lastly, we have a pencil. Okay, the pencil's kind of beans, but everything else I am taking with me, including the mugs. And that's an additional three trailers taken care of. Our pool of items and loot is growing lower and lower by the day, but I think we're getting a decent amount to really carve out a path for ourselves. The results don't really lie. We now have a massive stockpile of fresh food that I am going to need to eat, but now we also have some weapons and tools, a few containers for water, some random bits and baubles, and a few bits of non-perishable foods. And I think this is a perfect time to end the episode. We've only done a little bit of exploring so far, but with what we have, we are going to be able to make a quick little farm, which is huge. But that is for another day, as I need to explore and fully clear out this nearby area. Anyways, if you guys have liked this episode, be sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe for more. Peace the hell out, everyone.